Hi, um, this is going to be the second part of the video about measuring traffic from the 2019 February Bronze Contest. And so previously we talked about um, the problem itself and also an early hint, which involved one, splitting the problem into two parts, um, and two, iterating backwards and updating the answers min and max based on the conditions we have. So, um, I guess what we can do is get a little bit more specific. Okay, actually. Yeah, okay. So let's get a little bit more specific. So as we're iterating upwards, we can either encounter um, an off. Actually, let me just. We can encounter. Uh, I guess we'll actually start with an on. And so, what do we do if we encounter an on? So currently, we saw that uh, if it's an on, we can just subtract from both the min and the max or and update the range for our answer. Um, I'm actually just going to call it um, a min and a max. And so what this is, is just the values we're updating and will eventually become our answer. So when we encounter an on, what we, we, what we did last time was we subtracted one from both 10 and 14. And um, yeah, I guess subtract um, the on values from a min and a max. Uh, I guess the way they put it in the sample case was to make it a little bit easier, but um, it's not always going to be the same min and max for the on, so. I guess let's try to think of what would happen if instead of one and one and one, it was one and two. And so again, let's just focus on these two segments of the road. So we have one, two, um, coming into the highway and then 10 and 14 before. So we're trying to find the most specific values. Um, and um, what this means is that when we subtract, we want to we want to get the minimum amount of the mo the I guess uh, most minimal amount of traffic flow prior to the highway and the maximal amount of traffic flow prior to the highway, given these values. So when it was one and one, we just subtracted one from both of these. But now that it's one and two, what we want to do is actually subtract a min. And given that we only have one segment of highway before this, these will just be our a min and a max values. So we want to do a min of, we'll just call this cur, uh, cur max or c max. And C min. Okay. Actually, let me just make it a bit differently. Okay, so we have Kerr min and Kerr max. So we just want to do um, the A min minus uh, cur max. And so the reason why we're subtracting cur max from a min is because um, we want to obtain the smallest value possible and 10 minus two is going to give us that because um, no value or combination can uh, result in a lower value than eight given these current conditions. And since we're trying to find the most specific um, <clears throat> range, 
while encompassing any possible um, outcome. Yeah, we want to do it like this. And so the same goes for a max. We're just going to subtract cur mit. Yeah, so now that we know this, let's um, let's update. Our thing. So we're going to do subtract cur min from a max and cur max. So, like with this, we're going to obtain the maximum and minimal values from uh, the on ramp. Okay, so let's think about what might happen if it's not. Well, um, since we want to find values that uh, fit the requirements, what we did was when it was 10, 14, and 11 and 15, what we did was we took the max between 10 and 11 and the min between 14 and 15 because um, That'd be 11 and 14. Uh, because if we had 10, that wouldn't fit the requirements for 11 and 15. And if we had 15, that wouldn't fit the requirements for 10 and 14. So what that basically means is, if it's none, take the min of maxes and max of Um, okay. Let me just get this one. Okay. Okay, so the third case is if it's off. And so what we observed previously was that even though um, two to three might have come off, it wouldn't affect what came before because we're already given that 1115 is, um, I guess, the most specific range at that point. And if two and two or three units of traffic come off afterwards, it's not going to impact what comes before, although it might impact what comes after. And we'll cover that in the second part of the problem. So um, basically what this means is that um, if it's off, um, I guess um, this will only make sense if we cover the edge case, but what we'll do for now is we'll just, um, well, we're going to add the amounts. So what the amounts of traffic that come off to the um, the a min and a max so this might seem weird at first but let's just say that um this is not the example test case but let's just say we have five and eight on this segment of the road and then we have some cars coming off of it then um let's just say two and four come off so unlike this case, or the sample test case, um, we have 5 and 8 as a min and a max when we get here. Uh, but we can't just ignore the 2 and 4, because whatever comes after this is going to be 2, um, I guess at least 2 or at most 4 more than these current values, if that makes sense. Because basically, um, whatever's here, um, is going to equal to the amount that comes off plus whatever is here. So this time, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to just um, I guess add 
2 to the min and then add the max to the a max. And so um, basically what we're doing here is we're just trying to find the um, <coughs> the most encompassing a min and a max values. And that's going to require us to, you know, if we're subtracting, subtract the largest value from the smallest value, um, because that's going to give us the smallest value possible. And if we're adding, we're going to add the smallest value to the smallest value. That's going to give us the smallest value possible. So, yeah. Um, so, if it's off, add uh, per or min to Yeah. So this is basically, I guess, um, the procedures you follow for uh, the first part of the problem. And <clears throat> I guess this is a pretty good, um, a pretty big hint for you to start solving the problem. Um, but if you're still stuck after thinking about this for a little bit, then um, I'll go over the solution in the next video.